If you thought today was just another ordinary day, then I've got some good news for you because Epic just launched Unreal Engine 5 preview number one. And we've got some updates to MetaSound that we're gonna be diving into. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content. And if you'd like to be a part of the Sound Effects Guy Discord server, you'll find a link in the description below. So with that being said, let's get started. All right, so let's just dive right into Unreal Engine 5 Preview 1. And while it's not audio related, the first thing that you're gonna notice is we now have brand new prototyping stuff um, versus the old starter content, which personally, I really like, I really enjoy. Uh, this is gonna help make prototyping levels a lot easier. Now, obviously this is the third person template. Uh, I have checked out the first person template uh, and it's new as well. Those were the only two that I've checked out so far. Uh, but since the, that's not audio related, we're gonna bypass that. You're here for the meta sound stuff and that's what we're gonna dive into. So just like in my getting started with meta sounds video, uh, when we got early access, uh, this is just gonna be a general overview. I will be diving into specific features and functions down the road, uh, but I really just kind of wanted to show my reaction and, and my opinions on the state of meta sounds as they are now with preview number one. So I've already got an audio folder set up and we've got some footsteps set in here uh, just because footsteps are really easy to work with. Uh, I've got five heel sounds and five toe sounds. And um, if we right click on here and we go down to sounds, you're still not going to see meta sounds. We do have to enable that plugin first still. Uh, one thing you will notice though, even if you go through all of these menus, sound cue is now completely gone. So if you've been kind of holding out on using meta sounds because you're still really comfortable with sound cues, sorry, <laughs> they're gone. So just like before, uh, we've got to come up to edit and our plugins and type in meta sound. And we do still have to uh, enable it and then restart the engine. So with our engine restarted and our plugin enabled, uh, we can go ahead and right click here. And now if we go under sounds, you will see meta sound listed here, but it's actually called meta sound source instead of just meta sound. Uh, if you come under the uh, drop down menu here, you will find this thing called meta sound. And if I'm being completely honest, it, at the time of recording this, I have no idea what the hell it's for yet. Um, but I'll figure it out. And as soon as I figure it out, I'll definitely let you guys know. Uh, but for now, we're gonna go ahead and click on meta sound source. And I'm gonna call this footstep, just cause that's what we're doing with it. And so we can go ahead and open this up. Now you'll notice that there's a little bit of UI change and it, one of the first things that I noticed was that over here on the right, we now have, because this is a mono source, we just have a mono uh, level. If we do make this a stereo, we now get the dual channel. And you'll also notice that we now also get two separate outputs, one for left and one for right. My opinions on that, the fact that they're not together anymore, I'm a little on the fence about, but it is what it is. Honestly, what I'm most excited about, we can now have custom outputs. And we have full control over these outputs, just like we did with inputs. We can send them to other triggers, we can send them to different arrays, or integers or just about anything we want, just like we were doing with the inputs, we can just now add outputs. So since we're using footsteps as our example, uh, like normal, we're gonna go ahead and add a wave player. Actually, I'm gonna back up for just a second because I'm sure you noticed that our menu has changed a little bit. Uh, everything is in drop down form now. Again, I have feelings on that, but I do understand that it helps break it up a little bit and uh, just makes everything a little more compact. But we can still search, so I'm gonna add a wave player. 
And so far, everything seems to be pretty normal. So since we're dealing with an array of assets, I'm gonna go ahead like we typically did and I'm gonna make an input and I'm gonna call this a uh, heal. We're gonna make it an array. And I know my camera's in the way, but if we go all the way down to the bottom, hit wave assets. Now we have an array for assets. Now in comes something else that I am very excited about. So before we would have to, since I had five, we would have to hit the plus button five times. Now we can actually just select all of our heels, drag them up, and now they're there. That makes workflow just so much easier. So I can go ahead, since we made that input, and I'm gonna get the heel, and we're gonna get a random, this is all pretty standard to how we were doing things in early access. We'll go ahead and connect this here, this to play, this to play. I'm going to go ahead and switch this back to mono since we're dealing with footsteps. And we can just grab our left. And if we hit play, we have a footstep. I also noticed that if we use the right, it still works. So you can grab either one of these. Uh, I like to use left by default just because that's how audio cables work. If you plug a stereo into a mono source, typically you'd only get the left speaker anyway. So I use left for mono sources. And uh, then since we have uh, the toes, we're just gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing with that. We'll go ahead and copy and paste this down. And we need to make another input. And we're going to call this toe. It's an array. It's a wave asset. And now we can just grab our toes. Ha ha ha. And pull those in. And we'll go ahead and connect these. And just like we had to do before when we had multiple wave players, we do still have to add a mixer. And we've still got up to eight channels. And we'll go ahead and grab the left here. Grab the left here. And put that here. So far, uh, the workflow process is, is still the same. So now let's talk about a feature uh, that is super exciting, and we're still gonna use our footsteps as an example, uh, although you probably won't be using footsteps in this way. Uh, you'll notice now that I have broken these out into two separate meta sounds. So now I just have one for heel, and one for toe. And what we can do is we can actually create another meta sound here. And I'm just gonna call this one footsteps. And if we open this up, we can actually do something really neat here. Pull this off to the side here real quick. And I can grab our heel and toe meta sounds and drag them into another meta sound. So now we can almost have like a parent child type thing. Um, and we can connect these up and add a mixer. And this is going to serve a couple different functions. Uh, first and foremost, it's going to keep your meta sounds nice and small, albeit you now have multiples. Um, but 
what it's going to do, and again, you're probably not going to be dealing with this in footsteps. Uh, however, I'm just using footsteps as an example. Uh, because we have different sounds that we're combining together from different meta sounds, if we click on source, we can now have different attenuations, different effects per element. And then, so let's say, you know, we had uh, asset A has this type of reverb, asset B has this type of reverb. Now they can each have their own types and we can still mix them together. And you'll see that this plays just like normal. So there's a couple of changes that were made that uh, effectively take some of my previous tutorials and, uh, and now make them wrong. So I apologize for that. Uh, just the nature of software getting updated, but they're not completely, they're not big enough changes for me to warrant creating a new video. So I'm gonna try and cover some of these. So if you happen across them, then you know that changes need to be made to my previous tutorials. And one of them is with footsteps. Now, typically if we had a footstep built out, we could come into our animation and we would typically add notify, play sound, scrub through, find the next place where that footstep hits, do the same thing. And then when we click on our notify, we can grab that meta sound. I'll just do that one, this real quick. But now there's a problem. If I go ahead and hit play on this, we don't hear anything. And if we try to save it, we're gonna get an error that pops up saying, hey, uh, this is a looping animation, um, but the slot that you've picked is for one shots. And so what we need to do is we need to come back over here to our footsteps. And if we click on meta sound, you're now gonna see this new thing down here called interfaces. And what we can do is we can add an interface call and make it a one shot. So now that we've made this a one shot, we can go ahead and save it. And if we come back in here to our animation and hit play again, now we'll be able to hear those one shot type sounds. And for anything like that, that has a specific interface that it needs, uh, you will get an error that pops up to let you know. Um, just like with any type of error, read the error and it'll usually point you in the right direction. The other change, uh, and this is quite a big change, uh, and I'm just gonna grab our footsteps here uh, as an example, just so I have the MetaSound node here. If you've watched any of my previous tutorials where we're controlling a MetaSound with the blueprint, typically what we would do is we would pull off this return value and we would get our parameter interface. Well, that's gone. So uh, we've actually bypassed it now. So we can pull off this return, and if I want to do a trigger, I can just execute that trigger. If I'm using a float value and I need to change the integer, uh, I can set that integer. We no longer have to use the get parameter interface because now it's all built in to that audio component for the meta sound. So again, if you're watching any of my previous tutorials and you're like, hey, where's the get parameter interface that you mentioned in this tutorial? Well, that was in early access. We're now in preview one and it's gone. All right, so that's gonna wrap things up for this video. Uh, again, just like I did with the getting started with meta sounds, I really just kind of wanted to jump in and get a broad look at some of the changes that were made between early access and preview one. I will be diving into some more specific features uh, later down the road, but for right now, I just kind of wanted to get a jump start on looking at what's different and how it's going to affect our workflow moving forward. So if there is anything that you'd like to see me cover specifically, please let me know in the comments below 
or as I mentioned before, you can get a hold of me on the Sound Effects Guide Discord server. Until next time.